Kane became Tottenham's all-time record goal scorer yesterday following their 1-0 win over Manchester City. Kane's goal was his 267th for the club, taking him past the tally of fellow England forward Jimmy Greaves. And for more reaction now, we can cross to our reporter Jamie Weir, who's with a former Tottenham midfielder. Yes, thank you very much. Alongside Jamie Redknapp, we're going to discuss Tottenham first and in particular Harry Kane. Jamie, where does he sit now in the sort of pantheon of great Premier League strikers? He's still 60 goals by an Alan Shearer, but he's going to pass him if he stays in England, isn't he? He will pass him, but there is a bit of a, a but in that situation because you remember Alan Shearer scored goals before it was the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. I remember being at Alan Shearer's, I think it was one of his first games, might have been actually been his debut for Southampton against Arsenal, got a hat-trick yeah. when it was Division One. Yeah. So I'm sure Alan will be at home going, well, hold on, I scored a lot of goals <laughs> at the top level before, you know, uh, Harry Kane was probably even born in those days. So they're both different. They're yeah. Both incredible players. Harry Kane can be a playmaker, he can be a goal scorer, he can score his head. You know, I think he's only got one free kick from outside the box, but he can score all types of goals. I played with Alan Shearer and I played against him. Alan Shearer might not have had the finesse in terms of passing into, you know, setting other people up because that wasn't his game. He wanted to be the person scoring the goals. But Alan was one of the greatest crossers of all I've ever seen. Mm. You know, he knew exactly where he wanted the ball at all times. So they're very different players. Wayne Rooney's a different player. Wayne played obviously deeper than Harry and he did Alan Shearer. I, I find it a really difficult argument to settle. You've just got your favourites. You like, you like Messi, you like Ronaldo. This is very much a similar sort mm. of situation. Why don't we just say they're both, or they're all great players to score that many goals at the top level yep. is an amazing achievement um, and, it, and it, I think with Harry right now you could see his face yes you could see the players the emotion yep. it really meant a lot to him to break Jimmy Greaves's record to get to 200 Premier League goals an amazing achievement and and also one of the great guys as well yep. you know I, I know obviously you've met him a few times and I spent time with him off you know at the at training grounds and, and playing golf with him He's just a real gentleman, you know, he lives for, the foot, lives for his football, he's done a great job, he's in a brilliant position now, um, and there's no doubt he'll break Allen's record, you know, he's got 60 goals, you know, three, four solid seasons, and, and he'll break that as long as he stays injury free, and, I, and I'm sure he will, he looks after himself, so it's, it's um, you know, it's an amazing time for Harry, and I think we, you know, we should all congratulate him on what a great job he's done. You touch upon that, and you know, I think there's an element of tall poppy syndrome in this country sometimes, that when we have world class superstars, we like to knock them off their perch. Harry Kane is the captain of England, he's a model professional. Mm. Speak to any coach who he's played for, they said they'd love to have 11 Harry Kanes. You never see him stumbling out of a nightclub at three o'clock in the morning, he's just a proper professional. Yeah, well some said that's not but make you a proper professional, you have an odd night out on you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I know exactly what you mean. But Harry's just, um, you know, he, he's a, a dream professional. You know, my, my dad was at Tottenham when he was sort of coming through the ranks. I remember Tim Sherwood giving him his debut and, you know, things have gone so well for him. You know, there was a situation when Soldado was the golden boy at Tottenham. He just signed him a big money, got injured and Harry took his place and, and obviously the rest is history. But he's... Um, you know, he's different in so many ways. He might not be the quickest. He might not be the most agile, but he knows how to use his body so well. And, and just watching him play and his football brain is so good. You know, it reminds me of there's elements of Teddy sharing him the way that he can yeah. receive the ball and roll it away from people. And uh, just a joy to watch. And I, and, I, and I felt yesterday it was a really, you know, it was significant for him to score a goal. And, you know, such an important goal for Tottenham. It was a winning goal against Manchester City. You could see this season, Harry, knowing Harry and the, and the person he is and the winner that he is, he's had to listen to everybody talk about you know Haaland Haaland's one of the best strikers Just look at the number of goals he's got there is no way that Erling Haaland would have got the same amount of goals if he was playing for Tottenham as what Harry Kane's got this season mm -hmm. no chance the way that Harry makes goals you know and the, 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 the opportunity yesterday one chance one goal I know he had one you know when he went through the two defenders yesterday maybe he could have got another one but they're, they're, considering Tottenham aren't the most attacking side, not the most easy on the eye, they have to sit back, they have to counter what Harry, the amount of goals that Harry Kane has got in this team is absolutely phenomenal 1-11, to 11, it was a fantastic performance from Spurs yesterday. Mm -hmm. It was a proper Antonio Conte performance, even though he wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's been so much doom and gloom around Spurs when you hear some of the chat on Twitter in particular of late. But is that a bit of a turning point in their season yesterday? Yeah, I think so. Every now and again, you have a moment in a game. You know, I've been in situations like before when you think everything's contriving against you, you don't get in the res you're not getting the results. I think they lost four out of their last five at home. The home record was becoming a real problem for them. And, you know, you need the crowd on your side. And it just felt yesterday that they had that. You know, the crowd were back. It was a really big moment for the team, for the club. So much to look forward to now at the end of the season. A little, you know, with um, Newcastle dropping points. Um, um, and it feels like that top four race is going to be, you know, really electric right now and everybody's stumbling. It was an amazing weekend to see Arsenal obviously losing at Everton. 
Man City losing yesterday. Um, big, it, it made it for a really big weekend for Manchester United just getting those three points against Crystal Palace. Yeah, and in terms of now what happens with Harry Kane, I know you spoke to him a couple of years ago and he said, look, I can't say that I'll finish my career at Spurs, but as long as the club's heading in the right direction, I, I'm in no rush to go anywhere. Mm. Is the club heading in the right direction? Do they need to win silverware this season? He'll want to win silverware because he knows that's the one thing everybody can throw at him. That yeah. he hasn't won any silverware. He might have all the goal records. Now, Harry is, I think, in terms of being a footballer, and I've been around players before. I never, I never quite got myself in this situation. I remember Steve McManaman at Liverpool won the first Bosmans where you could go as a free transfer. Harry's got himself into a what I would say as a player, a brilliant position. He's one of the best players in the world. He's got 18 months left on his contract. So he is in a position to negotiate really hard with Tottenham if he wants to stay and he believes that Tottenham are going in the right direction and he feels... And this is what he said back to, back to, he said to me in 2020, that I want to stay, I love the club, but I'll only stay if I believe the club are going in the right direction. Yeah. Now, the fact that he hasn't quite signed yet tells me that he's still not quite sure. You know, he wants to see a little bit more. He wants the club to match his ambition. They have signed players, um, but he'll want silverware. So I think right now he'll be... There'll be clubs speaking to him. Make no mistake, we, we all bury our head in the sand and say, oh, you're not allowed to speak to clubs. He'll know pretty much every offer that's out there. He'll know every club that's interested in him. They'll be speaking to his agent. They'll be speaking sometimes directly to the player. That's just how football works. And he'll know that he's in a position where he can negotiate really hard. If you look at the clubs out there, where are the options? Man City obviously know because they've got Haaland. Manchester United are crying out for a striker. So that would be an option. Your heart sunk there when I said that to you, James, <laughs> didn't it? Um, but that's a fact, you know, yeah. and he, he would look at it. And where would you say, where have you got more chance of winning silverware right now? Manchester United are on the up. They're in the ascendancy. They're coming back. You can see that Ten Hag's got a real belief yeah, yeah. and a fear factor back in, uh, at Manchester United. And Harry will look at that and go, I could score some goals there. And there was something special about playing for Manchester United. It's one of the, you know, it's one of the elite clubs in the world. And he might feel that that's where I have more chance of, of, of winning silverware. He's in a great position. He yeah. could go on the free transfer. But I, knowing Tottenham, knowing Daniel Levy, maybe he might think with a, you know, it, it will come to a head, I believe, in the summer. One way or another, we yeah. will find out Harry Kane's future, whether he signs a new contract or maybe Tottenham, who won't want any player to go on a free transfer, might believe this is a time to cash in. Yeah. That's why the move didn't happen to Man City, uh, whatever it was, a year ago. Uh, yeah, two years ago now that... It didn't happen because the, he wasn't in a strong enough position to yeah. bargain. Where it, now he is. Harry Kane now holds all the cards. And he's going to be in a brilliant position. If he stays at Tottenham, I've got no problem with that. Mm -hmm. It's his club. He loves it. The crowd adore him. And that might be where he wants to stay and really do something very special. And, and no doubt he'll break all the goal-scoring records doing it there. But it's, um, it's a lovely position for him to be in. And I'm, whatever he does, I'd, I'd only respect it because it will come with it. You know, there'll certainly be the right meaning behind it because he's a top guy and he wants to be a success wherever he is.